guitar is kind of a beautifully unexpected tag along. This is a J35, it's not really a J35, it's not really an advanced jumbo. It's a Martin scale length on a Gibson guitar with a 1960 style pickguard. Let's talk about it. I'm Jeremy, I'm the Guitar Hunter. This property that you're seeing is Nashville. More specifically, this is a building called the Carriage House. Uh, if, you are, if you're plugged into StoryBrand, if you're trying to grow your marketing and trying to figure out how to communicate your message, you probably know this building. There's, there's been lots of YouTube videos and lots of social media content in this space. Uh, my brother-in-law is Donald Miller. He's a dear friend as well. And so we're gonna be here for a couple weeks. My wife and my family, we are in Nashville just for a couple months to dip our toe in the pool that is Middle Tennessee. Um, I'm a Virginia boy through and through. I love Virginia and I miss it, but we're here for a while and it's been really good so far. Let's talk about this guitar. This guitar is kind of a tag along and I've made videos about this before. This is a Wright Luthery J35. I have to show you more of this guitar and talk about the quick update that I did to it. This thing is a Sitka spruce top and look at that freaking maple on the back and sides. This is some of the absolute best finish work I've ever seen on any guitar ever. Uh, but this guitar was built by Nathan Wright. This guitar came to me, left me, and then came back to me and is now just kind of tagging along in my collection. And I wanna talk about if you're collecting guitars, you need to have a guitar kind of like this. Okay, I got this guitar on a trade a few months ago. I traded a Taylor AD17, an excellent guitar, um, a black top. I traded that and my Fender Acoustasonic player. Shouldn't have gotten rid of either of those. I really like both of those guitars. But I traded both of those for this because I figured for YouTube content, it would be really good to have small builders because I believe in small guitar builders and we are in the best time ever if you're into high-end, cool, exceptionally built acoustic guitars. And so I didn't know Nathan that well before this, um, but the opportunity to own a hand-built guitar, especially one that is one of one, a prototype, a custom, I, I jumped at that. So this guitar showed up to me, what, eight months ago? Almost a year ago. And um, it came from a guy named Bill. And so this guitar has been excellent for me. When I first got it, this guitar has a thing about it that is unbelievable. It's really like, and maple guitars do this, um, but it like has this force field of low end and punch and power to it. It just makes you want to just hug it and be close to it. I got this guitar and it had a beautiful pick guard from Holter Pick Guards, which Holter Pick Guards made this one and they are freaking exceptional. The best pick guards I have seen on any guitars in the last 20 years. I mean, I would say ever. The best pick guards I've ever seen um, Taylor is making in Tennessee. And so this video is kind of sponsored because he gave me this pick guard um, and then he also gave me some pick guards that are gonna go on my show Walter. Still can't see that one because that video is not done yet. But um, so my show Walter and a few guitars are going to have Holter pick guards. They are exceptional. So when I got this guitar, it had a Holter pick guard, but it was a very Martin shape on a very Gibson shaped guitar. And it looked strange. I wasn't going to mess with it, but there was a guy who wanted to buy this guitar and he offered me big bucks for it. And I said, okay, perfect. He said, one thing, could you take that pick guard off before I, before you give it to me? And I said, why don't you take the pick guard off when you get it? He said, no, I'd feel better if you took it off. I took it off. I had a hair dryer, but it still took a little spots, a couple spots of finish, and there was still a mark on it from not having a pick guard. Then it also looked very strange without a pick guard. Just didn't look right. And I sold it to the guy. He got it. He's like, I don't like it. It looks weird. I was like, okay. Um, so he sent it back to me, uh, or maybe he even. I don't think I even shipped it. I think he just saw it without a pick guard and, and called it off. Annoying. So then it was just kind of living life without a pick guard. Daniel uh, got it, had it for a while, liked it, but we both agreed it needed something. So that's where this pick guard comes in. And uh, it's so freaking cool. Um, so this is a uh, Holter pick guard and uh, made, by, made by Taylor uh, with Holter pick guards. Uh, it was such a fun experience ordering a custom pick guard. Now it is complicated when you live 500 miles apart. So there was lots of he would send me a template. I would have to print it out at 100% and make sure and double check and make sure to measure it each time that it was exactly the right size. Um, and then we went back, I think it was three rounds of revisions that we went back um, to get this. But 
we because uh, with this guitar we had to play around a little bit with there is a rosette on this guitar and it is kind of a digital modern looking rosette and so we had to play around with getting a very traditional kind of pick guard um, to work with uh, a very modern design and I think we nailed it I'm super happy with this Closing thoughts. If you are collecting guitars, think of it like assembling the Avengers. Like if you're going to cast that movie, you realize you're going to have to have 15 rolls. Now I'm not saying you have to have 15 guitars, but you need to look at your guitar collection like it's an ensemble cast. And you have to figure about the strengths that will cover the other weaknesses and the weaknesses that will be covered by other strengths. And you have to assemble guitars in such a way that they both give you very specific kind of guitar tones that you want and very general tones. You could have guitars that only do one thing or you could have guitars that kind of cover a lot of bases. And then you also want to figure out guitars that will be very dark compared to very bright. And you want to have guitars that are dark and moody and brooding and then you have guitars that are very bright and excited and can just fit in any mix and be very general and very diverse. And then you start kind of triangulating these. Now within that, there are still more specific roles. Now I cover a lot of this in my guitar course and I want you to download that course. I want you to check it out and learn how to build guitars because th the way to a meaningful life in guitars is having a collection of guitars that sets you up for every position, every, every jam circle that you're in, every band you're in, every recording session that you have the right piece of gear and you have the right, like you've thought through your tone and what you want to offer the world. So there are predictable roles and I just want to give you an example. This for me is there are two roles that this guitar uh, could fill in my guitar collection. Number one, you kind of jokingly call it the freeloader. This is a guitar that you didn't plan on. I probably wouldn't have ordered this guitar new, but once it showed up in my lap, it's so good. Um, or this could also be the wild card. The wild card is a totally unexpected guitar in your collection that you would not have expected. Yeah, this is more a wild card than a freeloader. It's kind of, well, yeah, anyway. But um, for me, this guitar is just freaking exciting and wonderful and it's beautiful. And uh, yeah, I'm going to stop saying they're going to be with me forever. But this is a guitar that I'm, you know, there's no problem for me that this guitar is back for a while. And I think it just looks complete with this pick guard. So uh, thanks to Taylor. Thanks you to Holter Pick Guards. Thank you to Nathan Wright for making this guitar. And uh, thank you for you guys watching. Make sure you're subscribed. Uh, tell me what kind of guitars you have. Tell me about your collection. Like what... What are the roles you've cast? Do you have the workhorse? That's the one you have to have. You have to have the guitar that you can play in any situation with the lights off. Uh, if you're on a stage, if you're at church, if you're in a bar, you can play and you don't have to look at the fret markers. You just play. That's home base. And then after that, you get to kind of freestyle and have fun. You can have the old faithful. You can have the wild card. You can have the groundbreaker, an instrument that totally forces you into new territory every time you play it. Tell me about your guitar collection in the comments down below. I'm Jeremy. I'm the Guitar Hunter. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Thank you.